of use cases we commonly see um, out there and how they translate um, uh, to uh, the area of sports or how they might translate. In some cases, we've got examples of people um, already practicing these um, in sporting industries. In other cases, uh, not so much. Uh, then I'm going to uh, speculate a little about, uh, about areas uh, where big data might be used in the future um, uh, in, in sporting. Um, and then I want to uh, hopefully leave time at the end uh, for some Q&A, where we can, we can have a little discussion, uh, get, get you guys uh, more engaged. Um, so first, a little bit about, about my background and, and, uh, and, and the big data space. So uh, as, as was mentioned in the introduction, um, I, I come from the open source world. Um, I launched a, a, a number of projects. Um, uh, Hadoop, notably, uh, has become phenomenally successful. Um, but what's really been amazing to me is the number of projects that have since been created around Hadoop, that we've got this thriving ecosystem uh, of open source projects providing a tremendous, arrange, tr tremendous array of uh, functionality, of, of, of power um, uh, to people who are, who are processing data. Um, uh, you know, we, this, is, this has just been over the last, um, uh, you know, less than 10 years illustrated here, um, uh, and there, there's been more added since. Um, uh, and this is not the sort of growth and technical capabilities that we saw in the preceding uh, 20 or 30 years of, of data technology. Um, we've really, um, uh, through, through this open source process, um, seen a blossoming uh, of, uh, in, in data technologies um, uh, around Hadoop in this space, um, giving you unprecedented power um, to really um, uh, affordably store, process, harness, benefit, profit um, uh, from all the data uh, that is now generated by all of the devices uh, that we have in our world. And, and that we, this is going to continue. We're continuing to see more things instrumented, um, more devices, more activity happening online. Um, all of that generates data, um, which you can use, um, if you choose, um, uh, to better understand uh, what's going on um, and, uh, and, and harness it. Now, that said, you've got <laughs> quite, a, quite a few um, uh, open source projects here on, on the right, um, uh, which are all created by independent communities of people released on different cycles, it can be kind of confusing. This is, this is what uh, Cloudera foresaw back in, uh, in 2008 uh, and, and was founded to try to um, help folks um, easily digest this. Um, uh, and uh, so we, we package together um, uh, all of these different open source projects into what we call the Enterprise Data Hub. Um, uh, and, uh, and we've got, you know, at the, at the at the um, uh, bottom, we've got you know, uh, ways of ingesting data. Uh, then we've got ways of storing that, um, uh, some, some unified services to help you manage things, um, and then different engines on the top um, uh, to do the, the actual uh, querying and, and processing of the data. Um, uh, we also have some uh, proprietary commercial products um, that are on, sit on the side um, uh, for, that, are, that are for use by our customers um, to help their IT organizations manage this to install, to upgrade, um, to optimize applications, uh, to manage security, um, to manage the data sets, um, uh, to you know, age things out as appropriate, um, to uh, monitor to see who's using what, to make sure all the uses are, are appropriate, um, sort of audit trails. Um, and, and in general, Clutter's focus is to make this set of open source uh, projects um, fast, easy, and secure uh, for our customers. Um, uh, to really, really, really facilitate um, this thing. The center part, the core technology which stores and processes the data, is all open source. And, that's, and we're continuing to see lots of evolution and improvement in that from the open source community. The sides are where Cloudera is providing value uh, to help you take advantage of this open source uh, stack uh, that, that's being created. Um, so you know, we don't expect um, to own the whole universe of data. You've got existing systems out there. Um, so a lot of our focus is also on uh, integrating um, uh, this enterprise data hub uh, in with all the existing uh, uh, vendors that you know and systems that you, that you already have. Um, uh, and so we, we, these are all partners of Cloudera um, uh, that we work with um, uh, to, to make sure that uh, your, your experience is, is seamless um, uh, in, in um, ingesting data. Um, running your analytics, uh, viewing them, in, in, and integrated into your, um, uh, your institutions. Um, 
So a little, little uh, snapshot here. Um, we've got you know, uh, well over 1,000 customers, um, uh, over 2,500 uh, partners um, in various areas. Uh, you know, some of their, their logos listed on the previous slide. Um, we're, we're around the world now. Um, uh, we're seeing, seeing a lot of growth um, outside of the US these days uh, in these data technologies. We're at, you know, in most of the biggest companies, um, we have a presence. Uh, it's a small presence and it's growing. Uh, that, that's sort of the way we see um, uh, you know, big, big data being adopted. Uh, it's not overnight uh, taking over the world. Um, it's rather people as they're developing uh, new applications um, for new, you know, uh, solving new problems, uh, they're adopting these uh, and it's gradually growing into uh, organizations, starting small and growing up from there, which we think is a, is a smart way uh, to try to adopt these technologies. Um, all right, so now I want to go into um, uh, some of the ways where we think uh, there, there's some analogies that we, between uh, what, what's possible in sporting and what we've seen in lots of other industries. Um, uh, so in particular, I want to talk about a use case um, uh, which we're, we're going we're gonna to term, uh, or coin the term, uh, FAN 360. Um, and this is by analogy with um, something we've seen again and again, industry after industry, which we call customer 360. Uh, so you, you've got, you know, traditionally, uh, institutions built these silos of data uh, uh, for different systems, uh, you know, for, for sales, for inventory, um, for, for various things uh, that uh, we're more or less independent. Uh, and uh, it, you have different lines of business, uh, maybe a web, maybe a retail presence. Those were different systems. And, but you have your customers are across all of these. Uh, and so with this newer technology platform, you have the opportunity to combine all of these. It's really designed to facilitate that. It's on, on one hand, considerably less expensive um, uh, to store things so you can afford to put everything uh, in one place, even having another copy of it, so you don't disrupt your existing systems. Moreover, it's designed to let you, uh, to facilitate experiments um, and agility in, uh, in evolving applications um, and discovering what are the new use cases, um, which is precisely what you want to do uh, to better understand um, uh, your, your customers. Um, so, you know, we, we, we believe that from a customer's point of view, um, they think about your brand. Uh, in sports, that, that might be the team, um, or it might be a product brand. Um, and they see it as a, as a coherent whole, and that your goal as an institution is to, is to realize that, um, and that these separate siloed uh, systems don't support that. Um, and that with, a, with an enterprise data hub, we can help you enable uh, that coherent um, uh, experience for the user um, by unifying, unifying the data um, uh, that you have um, uh, under your, your brand umbrella. Um, so here we, we can see an you know, example of how a user jumps between um, in-store experiences, web experience, and mobile experience, um, a, a, on, a, a phone conversation, um, and all of these should be presented as a, as a uh, coherent whole. One should know about the other um, from the customer's point of view. Um, and traditionally, the way we built systems, they haven't. Um, and as we, you know, more and more things go digital, um, this becomes worse and worse. There's a, more and more different systems, more and more sources of data uh, compounding uh, th this, this issue um, uh, as, as we go forward um, uh, with, with more mobile devices, um, uh, IoT, uh, more online services and sites. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a problem that's, that's growing. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, the other thing we've, we believe uh, strongly, we've seen again and again, is that as you combine data, you get, you get more value. Uh, classic example of this uh, from the early days of big data um, was there was a, a course that was being taught at Stanford um, uh, and uh, in, in data science. Um, at that time, Netflix had a contest. I don't know, anybody remember the Netflix's contest where they would um, publish um, uh, all of these um, uh, ratings that people had made of movies uh, and um, ask you to um, predict uh, what movies people would uh, like uh, best next that they hadn't seen. And if you could do better than Netflix's in-house algorithm that they were using to make movie recommendations, they would give you a million bucks. Um, and eventually somebody did and won the prize. Um, but in the meantime, uh, this Stanford guy used it as a, as a um, uh, class challenge, uh, class project. Um, you have a data set, you've got a problem, you've got a way to evaluate it, and have different teams of students compete. 
Um, and he saw again and again the students that would win were the ones that found other data sets that also bore on the problem. So you've got um, uh, Netflix's data, and you've got Netflix's existing ratings, and you've got their user reviews, but you could also go to IMDb and download all their ratings. Um, and the more sources of data that you brought to bear on the problem, the better you did. Um, and that's a, that's a common uh, moral you see here. Not just having more data, but having more sources of data is, is really uh, a very, very valuable thing. So let's now look at, at some examples of um, how Customer 360 might work uh, in, in sporting. So you know, typically, we've had a fairly uh, narrow segmentation. Um, we're now able to do a much finer grained segmentation uh, of, of customers really do a, a segment of one individualized um, to a given fan um, based on all of these, this, this wider variety uh, of, of sources. Um, uh, it, there's a number of different um, uh, use cases which, which can flow out of this. Um, uh, we, we can do a better job understanding um, uh, the, the, the fan to start with, um, use that to um, uh, re give, give recommendations that are tailored to that individual um, uh, both in, in promotions, merchandising, um, you know, what, what uh, tickets they ought to buy. Um, uh, and we also uh, can work, you know, we, we call churn mitigation, very common use case in, in lots of uh, industries we, we, we work in, um, uh, telecom, banking, and so on, which, uh, you know, you'd, you'd call uh, probably fan loyalty in sporting. Um, you really, over the long term, uh, want to uh, invest in retaining uh, fans. Um, and, uh, and so this is, again, uh, the more data ha you have to better understand uh, the fan, the better job uh, you're going you're gonna to be able to do retaining them, understanding what are the, what's correlated uh, with, with uh, people going to a different brand, a different team, um, and how you can better motivate them to continue to uh, you know, visit your stadium uh, or whatnot um, uh, can, can directly be inferred um, from this, this uh, powerful, rich sets of, of data, which you, you can now uh, access. Um, so, you know, some uh, more concrete examples, if you look at, uh, you know, peop uh, people attending live events and stadiums, um, the sources of data uh, are, are incredibly rich um, that you might uh, bring to bear on this, um, and the, the, um, the uses that you might make of it um, are, are, are incredibly diverse. Um, you can uh, give people notifications of what's going on in the stadium, stadium um, keep them uh, involved whether or not they're present. Um, uh, you can facilitate um, payment while they're, while they're uh, at the stadium as part of the system, make, make that, that experience more seamless, um, uh, make them wait less um, away from their seat. Um, uh, and you know, similarly, you can, you can help them understand how lines are, are moving at different restrooms, different snack stands, um, when they might um, uh, when and where they might best um, uh, spend their time uh, while they're at the stadium. Um, uh, so another example um, of uh, a, a case, this is an existing customer of Cloudera's um, in the apparel industry, um, oh, one of the, uh, the largest um, uh, footwear and apparel companies in the world, this Cloudera customer, um, uses an enterprise data, data hub to build a, a, um, a customer 360 database um, of all of their um, uh, customers, uh, based on website visits, retail store visits, um, uh, you name it. Um, and uh, not just understand um, the classic uh, questions, uh, but also be able to get really fine-grained uh, predictions um, for individual um, uh, customers of theirs um, and have particular recommendations to retain that customer uh, as, as, a, as a fan of their brand. Um, and uh, they, they've been very successful in this. Not only are they they were able to immediately replace existing applications um, at a lower cost, um, uh, decreasing the turnaround from uh, days to minutes, um, but are now um, deploying lots of new applications um, uh, like this that they weren't able to do before. It's been a, been a great success story. Um, uh, another example is um, we, we, that I, I think this is all applicable to is broadcast. Um, uh, Cloudera has been uh, involved in, in working with um, communications companies for years. We've got, got a lot of experience Seen a lot of use cases um, here. These are, these are all uh, customers in, in various areas of, of communications. Um, uh, and there, there's uh, a myriad uh, use cases here um, uh, from understanding uh, the audience um, uh, at, at a whole, understanding them as individuals um, uh, through, through their behavior, um, uh, which, which can be monitored on, on the communications network, 
um, and then to and, and actually going and engaging them. Um, uh, so uh, in many cases, you may not be a communications uh, service provider uh, directly. Uh, so you can do over the top uh, communications, um, you know, have your website in, and understand, correlate what people are watching and what they're doing online at your website, on Twitter, and various other social media, um, uh, and really be able to, to then better understand them, uh, even when you're not uh, as tightly in the loop as, say, the, the, the cable company is. Um, uh, you can also, if, you're, if you are directly this, the, the provider, um, uh, really optimize your network experience. Um, uh, we, these, are, these are use cases we've seen um, uh, to um, help folks actually uh, manage their content um, uh, a, a, as well um, uh, and, and use that to, to better market and provide better products um, in, the, in the media space. Um, so one, one concrete example, a uh, customer of ours, Dish, um, has an enterprise data hub uh, managing all of their um, uh, set-top box data, among other sources. Um, before, they, they were not able to even uh, ingest all of the data from their set-top boxes, um, uh, and now they're able to uh, process it all uh, in, in an easy manner, um, uh, and uh, they, can, they can make um, recommendations to the content providers, uh, they can better describe their customer base um, so that people know how to market to them, how to develop content that's appropriate. Um, and moreover, for advertisers, um, they can provide uh, very fine-grained um, information about the user so that they can do more better, better targeted uh, advertising. Uh, been, been a huge success for, for DISH. Um, uh, now I want to move to a, the, a second area uh, after FAN360 um, where we, we see uh, data technologies uh, being applicable in sporting. And this is directly um, for, the, for the event itself, you know, on, on field for the players' um, uh, performance and health. You know, classically, um, uh, baseball has had a, a long tradition of gathering a lot of statistics uh, and using those. Um, uh, but we think that's, that's going to only multiply now um, with the presence of technology. You can, you can uh, scan videos um, and, and learn a lot um, and uh, recognize um, and measure things, uh, spin rate, exit velocity. Um, we're, we're getting more and more metrics uh, in the field, in the game, um, uh, that we can record uh, finer and finer grain, so that these sort of summary statistics of a game um, are, are very coarse next to um, keeping track of every single action and many components of that action uh, in, the, in the course of a game, uh, which we can easily do now. Um, uh, so, you know, there's, as I said, a tradition of, uh, of analyzing statistics um, uh, and, and using those to optimize teams' uh, behavior. Um, uh, you know, we've got the, the Moneyball case, uh, which is you know, well-known, made into a movie even. Um, but now we, we've got all this uh, additional data. We should be able to do a much better job um, of predicting things. Uh, so I think there's, there's, there are real opportunities here. Um, uh, an analogy that we see is with precision medicine. Precision medicine is a, is a big trend in, in healthcare to try to use all the sources of data that we have about patients um, to personalize and optimize um, uh, their treatment. Um, I think this, this is a, a, a good analogy with which what's possible in athletics. I mean, you think about it, uh, athletics and healthcare really aren't all that different uh, in many ways. So these are examples of the, the sources of data um, that one has in precision medicine. Um, to really uh, fully characterize and understand a patient. Um, and most of these directly translate to similar statistics um, uh, that we can gather about athletes. Um, uh, so ways that we might use this. You know, the, the, one of the most uh, important things um, uh, for an athlete is to prevent injuries. Um, you, you've, got, you've got somebody who's valuable to a team. Um, uh, once they're hurt and they're, they're on the bench, uh, they're not helping you. Um, and so whatever you can do um, to predict what behaviors are, are causing injuries um, is going to in, increase uh, the value of, of that player. Um, uh, if you can, you can uh, keep them on the field and healthy, if you learn that certain plays are particularly hazardous, there's just probably a bad idea. Um, uh, you know, if, if they discover at a certain uh, point in the game, they, you know, they tend to get injured, um, then you, know, you, you want to take them out late in the game or, or whatever. There's, it's hard to know what the correlations that you're going to find are in advance. Um, it's a, it's an, you know, an area where people can keep making discoveries um, uh, over time of how, how to correlate. But the more data they have, 
the more uh, and, and higher quality correlations uh, they'll be able to make um, uh, of understanding how to, how to optimize the performance of, of individual players. Um, also in, in psychology, understanding how to, how to motivate um, uh, players um, towards optimal performance, um, uh, again, can be, uh, can be really optimized with, with data. Um, uh, and lastly, you know, we, we can understand um, uh, more about players' uh, entire careers um, uh, by keeping this, this long-term longitudinal data, learn about uh, player populations um, uh, and, and how, to, how, to, how to keep them uh, healthy and, and productive um, uh, over the course of, of their career. Uh, you know, this all feeds into research in athletics, um, uh, in, you know, preventing injuries, um, uh, uh, identifying you know, athletes um, who have uh, uh, good, good prospects, um, uh, developing capabilities, treating um, uh, injuries, um, uh, lots, of, lots of opportunities here um, to use data to improve all of these processes. Um, uh, they're all, again, very analogous um, uh, to things we see in, in precision medicine for maintaining general health, um, uh, and, and these, are, these, are, these are being used. Uh, and similarly, you can use them to maintain optimal performance uh, for, for athletes. Um, some examples from uh, healthcare um, uh, that, that we've seen. Um, uh, one is, uh, that's, that's a neat one, is at the Michael J. Fox Foundation, um, where they're trying to better understand Parkinson's. Uh, Parkinson's is a disease that affects different people differently. Uh, my, my brother has Parkinson's, and I'm, I'm familiar with his symptoms, and I've got other friends who have Parkinson's, and they've got very different sets of, of symptoms um, that affect them at different ages uh, in different ways. And so we're, we're only beginning to really understand um, how Parkinson's uh, works. And so in order to, to better do that, uh, Michael J. Fox Foundation has worked with Cloudera um, to help install, um, uh, to help track people um, uh, on, a, on a daily basis um, uh, with, with uh, um, watches and other, other devices um, and really gather a lot of data about how Parkinson's patients are moving. It's a, it's a disease that affects your ability to move um, uh, and uh, see how that uh, progresses over time. Um, uh, and by understanding it, we hope to, to then uh, be able to better treat it um, uh, and, and figure out which, which symptoms are the ones that we ought to be focusing on, on the most. Um, uh, so that's, that's been a neat project. Um, another area that I'm, I'm very excited about um, personally um, is all the genomic work. You know, in, inside of us all, um, uh, we have digital codes uh, which are driving um, our, our bodies. Um, and uh, we're, uh, you know, over the past decades, uh, we're, we're, we've understood more and more about our, our genetic code. Um, uh, but we're, we're, we've only scratched the surface. Um, we're only just being able to affordably um, uh, get everyone's genome um, uh, and, and uh, understand it. Um, but moreover, um, as you develop pathologies, um, uh, cancers in particular um, uh, have their own genome uh, distinct from yours uh, because they're, they're uh, based on mutations. Um, understanding uh, how those um, operate, um, uh, what different mutations mean, is a data problem. Um, and so we're seeing this, this you know, area, this, this, uh, in, in many ways, the, the grand challenge of medicine has been to try to find ways to effectively um, uh, treat and, and cure cancer um, has now been uh, realized is, is a data problem. We can, we can look at the mutations um, uh, in the genome. We can find out, um, we can study different people who have the same mutation, even though their genomes are different. The mutation is the same, uh, and, they, and, and understand which treatments have been effective um, uh, let, lets, us, lets us learn that. Um, we can also, the, the process um, that the genes are interpreted by um, as they produce um, uh, RNA and proteins um, is a data uh, process uh, that we can understand and use that to, and analyze that to learn how to, to stop uh, tumors from growing, for example. Um, uh, there's, there's a lot of, lot of possibility here um, that we're seeing uh, in, in, the, in the precision medicine area uh, involving, involving genomics. Um, uh, very exciting, um, and I think we're going to continue to see um, uh, the, this affordable, powerful data systems pay off in this area um, for decades. We're just, just beginning to scratch the surface of, of what's possible here um, in, in treating and understanding people based on their, on their genome. Um, so last area I want to mention um, uh, is uh, security. 
Um, this is a very common use case for Clutter. I mean, first of which, we want to make sure people understand that the software that we provide uh, is very secure. You've got all these open source projects. Most of them haven't classically worried a lot about security. Cloudera has, uh, through the years, been adding security features to give you a coherent, secure system uh, across all of these components um, uh, that, that provides you know, authentication of users. You know who people are. You can authorize them so they can only do the things uh, that you want them to do. Uh, you can encrypt all your data to protect it from uh, others, outsiders, in a, in a very secure manner. Um, and you can audit and understand and double check um, uh, and see who's done what um, over time. These are sort of the, the, the core pillars um, uh, of, of a secure system. But moreover, people are really using um, the, the Enterprise Data Hub um, to, uh, to create um, uh, uh, you know, secure systems and to manage security issues. So, for example, in um, uh, the credit industry, um, we've seen a lot of work on um, risk mitigation um, and, and fraud detection. Um, uh, and uh, the same thing applies in sporting. Um, there, there are cases of fraud that you'd like to uh, identify. And so the same methods, I think, are, are applicable here. Same thing with, with corruption. Um, we've seen you know, anti-money laundering is a popular use case in the financial sector. Um, uh, match fixing is, a, is an analogy, um, is something that you'd like to scan for um, in data uh, and predict um, uh, and prosecute um, uh, based on data in sporting. Um, uh, similarly, so you, you, you've got, uh, you know, we, criminal law uses big data more and more um, to uh, identify uh, criminals and, and locate them and prosecute them. Uh, and we've got similar issues um, in, in sporting where we'd like to, to stay on top of people who are cheating uh, in various ways um, and, and, and engage in activities which we don't want to have associated with our sports. Um, so, uh, you know, some, uh, one example from credit card industry, um, the, the, probably the largest uh, credit card processor in the world, um, some years ago, uh, installed an enterprise data hub um, uh, to do um, better um, uh, fraud prediction. Uh, and uh, within a very short time after installing the system, uh, they were now able to um, uh, keep years of data online instead of just um, uh, some number of days um, for doing their, their fraud analytics. Um, uh, and they quickly identified the largest fraud problem they'd ever seen, um, uh, and, and which was, uh, you know, right away, that one, um, identifying that one fraud, fraud pattern um, uh, paid for the whole system. Um, uh, and so it was, it was a very, very clear uh, return on investment there, um, and, uh, and we're, we're continuing to see them uh, value this in, uh, highly. And we see credit card companies around the world um, and banks deploying very similar systems um, uh, to watch for, for fraud. Um, uh, then the other obvious thing is, is keeping hackers out. Um, cybersecurity um, uh, is, uh, you know, the, the existing technologies, um, really uh, SIEM, um, uh, don't scale as, as, as well as they need to to capture um, all of the data, whereas an enterprise data hub uh, really can store all of the data that is relevant um, uh, to these problems. Uh, and then perform the kinds of analytics um, which are really going to help you address these problems. Um, you, re you don't want to be uh, looking at um, uh, sort, of, sort of signatures after the fact. You really want to be um, analyzing, and because new threats are arriving all the time, um, you need to be looking for outliers for, for um, activities that don't fit known patterns, um, uh, and, uh, and then examining those more closely so that you can proactively find the new attacks um, before they've caused damage um, uh, and get at them. So again, an, an enterprise data hub is, is an ideal way to do this. Um, we've seen this in, in many sectors um, uh, for, for spotting uh, intrusions um, uh, before they've gotten very far um, uh, by, by noticing them as, as anomalies, using machine learning methods, um, and, and stopping them early. And we really think this is the, the future of cybersecurity. Um, uh, We've uh, you know, seen this um, at a uh, retail bank um, uh, and, and worked, worked hard with them uh, to prevent the spread of malware um, uh, and, uh, within their organization um, and found this, this approach to be very effective. Um, we started an open source project to try to um, uh, raise the, the level of shared technology in this area um, by creating open data models um, for cybersecurity. It's Apache Spot. 
Um, uh, so lastly, I just want to, I'm running out of time here, trying to go quickly, but had, had a lot of content. Um, just have a few things to get, your, get you thinking about um, what might be possible in the future. Um, you know, we, we've, we've got more and more IoT, uh, more and more devices out there. Um, uh, I, I expect players in, in more sports to be more closely monitored. I, I'm a cycling fan. I know that we've only recently started having GPS on, on every bike in the Tour de France, for example, um, tracking their position. And that data hasn't really, I think, been mined yet, uh, but, but it's, it's a wonderful thing to have, and hopefully we'll have more of that. Similarly, we, we're starting to get uh, monitors inside of every uh, football player's helmet, so we know where they are on the field and what they do. You can imagine translating this to their limbs. You could either recognize it from video, and really understanding the flow of a play, um, uh, and, and then correlating that, um, their performance, um, uh, with other uh, portions of their, of their lives, um, uh, based, based on, you know, uh, you can look at sleep time from watches and, and so on. Um, uh, one concrete example is um, uh, in, in IoT space uh, is GoPro, customer of ours, um, uh, has been uh, using this uh, enterprise data hub for, for a few years now um, uh, to better understand what their customers are doing, all, the, all their interactions as they um, upload and edit um, and share videos. Um, uh, they, they can then um, uh, provide suggestions and improvements to their product um, uh, that, that are, are better targeted to their customers. Um, uh, you can imagine more, you know, doing, doing a better job with video analytics, um, understanding the, the action. We're seeing tremendous advances in, in this already. Um, you, can, you can see on TV and you can imagine more going on behind the scenes, giving uh, individual teams uh, advantages by doing a better job of analyzing things. Uh, virtual reality um, uh, seems like it's uh, got a lot of potential um, uh, in sporting, um, both, both for fans as well as for, for players doing practice, much like uh, pilots practice in a flight simulator. Uh, and, uh, you know, we really think augmented reality, the sort of giving um, players um, uh, data in real time uh, as they're playing is a, is a, is a potential here um, to really uh, change the, the nature of sports. Um, and, you know, and lastly, you know, machine learning is, is, uh, is really taking off these days. Um, and there's a lot of possibilities. You know, we've got um, self-driving cars and we've got, you know, machines that can play uh, Go and chess and things like this better than humans or at least as good as humans. Um, uh, you know, is there, are there ways in which we can use some of that intelligence in sporting to, um, uh, you know, help officials do a better, better job of officiating uh, by understanding and, and enforcing the rules, um, by having players make better decisions um, on, on the field? Um, I, I think there's, there's, there's a lot of potential there. Um, so I think I'm uh, about, whoops, about out of time here, um, uh, which the screen seems to agree with. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know if we have uh, time for questions. We have a few minutes here. Uh, great. Uh, thank you. Thanks for, for bearing with me as I, as I rush through that. Um, you're welcome. So any, any thoughts you guys have or questions about um, big data, open source, and sporting? Anybody want to be brave? And Yes, go ahead. Um, you know, that's the classic question from security and, and, and encryption, you know, is, is, uh, is security through obscurity um, uh, appropriate? And the problem with that is, um, uh, can you really rely on the, on the obscurity? Um, uh, can you really rely that people, so uh, if, if you have, uh, you know, this, is, this comes back to a lot of uh, encryption cases, um, uh, if, if, uh, if Apple knew the key that would unlock everyone's phone um, uh, and, and render their data, um, does that mean that it wouldn't ever leak out? And it takes a lot of confidence to, to believe that it won't ever leak out. Um, and the better approach, in, in terms of actually providing security, um, is for Apple to not know that, um, to not to be able to actually decrypt your phone. Um, uh, and so I think that the similar uh, thing goes here. What you really want are systems, um, algorithms that are resilient to uh, the knowledge of attackers, um, because you might think the attacker doesn't have knowledge of, of how you're analyzing them, but if they do, then you're just privileging some attackers over others um, uh, because, because they're likely, uh, things are, are likely to leak out. Um, so that's sort of the classic uh, security approach to that. But what we're really talking about in, in the open source at this point is not so much the algorithms um, as the data models. Um, uh, there's, um, you know, these sort of network data 
Um, uh, and there's, there's, you know, it's, it's common uh, data in, in every institution. Um, we've got some common data formats that work well in the Hadoop ecosystem. What we'd like is everybody to encode uh, their network data in the same way to um, grow a, an ecosystem of people doing the actual analytics for security. Um, so you don't need to have six different copies, one for each um, a kind of analytics that you're using from a different vendor to predict a different kind of, of, of security violation. Um, rather, you'd like them all to be able to share um, and build things on top of that. So that's the level we're working at in open source right now, is just on having this uh, open data model uh, for cybersecurity. We want to do the same thing for telecom, for healthcare, um, to sort of raise the level of SAC um, uh, a little bit into some industry specifics. But the actual algorithms could be um, open source or they might not be. You could go either way with that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have any, uh, you know, special inspiration about that. I think, I think it's an exciting area to have, to have wearables uh, involved in sports, to be able to um, uh, give people feedback on, on where they are on the, on the court, on the field, um, uh, that they can't easily get uh, otherwise. Um, uh, as, you know, I, I think you've got uh, great ideas. You know, if an outfielder knew where the, where the wall was as he was running backwards, uh, that'd be pretty handy. Uh, and, uh, and, and it doesn't seem like a hard problem to build something that would let them do that. Anybody else? We good? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate your time. Uh, and I uh, hope that was uh, helpful and inspiring to you.